Politicians are back in Ottawa and fine-tuning their political attacks. The NDPs today aim squarely at new Tory leader Pierre Polyev. Take a look. And Jagmeet Singh is the leader of the New Democrats. He's with us here in studio. Hi, Mr. Singh. Good to have you back in studio. Nice to see you. Great to be back in studio, uh -huh. especially. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, I want to start off on the ad that, that our viewers will have just watched that you and your party put out today about the new leader of the Conservative Party. Is it essentially an admission that you're worried Pierre Polyev uh, has a message that will resonate with people who would normally vote for you? We're not worried, but we certainly want to talk about his record. We want Canadians to have an informed position when it comes to each of the parties that they can choose when they vote. And it's very important for folks to know where Pierre Polyev has stood on really important matters that impact workers, whether it's minimum wage, whether it's making the CEOs pay their what they owe, or, or whether it's really standing up for people. He's shown again and again that he's not been on their side. But, but on the idea of whether or not you're worried, if you weren't worried, why would you put out an ad? I think it's important for people to know what choices they can make. And new leader, people need to be able to determine where they're going to be putting their vote eventually and, and who they can count on. And I think it's important for us to make sure we call out some of the hypocrisy. He said things like, you know, people shouldn't get the dental care program. Well, he's had dental care paid for by the public since he was in his mid-20s. He is against people getting more money in their pockets, even though... Uh, that is something that's going to actually make it easier for people to get groceries. So we want to call out the hypocrisy. Just on that, and, and I'm certainly you know, not here to defend him, but when you say he's against dental care, I mean, he's against the way in which it's been introduced under this government in agreement with your party. Uh, I, I don't think I've heard him say nobody should have dental care out there. You shouldn't get help with fixing your teeth if you don't have the ability to do so. Well, fundamentally, if we have a plan that's going to give people who don't have coverage coverage and he's voting against it, he's sending a message that he's opposed to people getting that care. I think that's wrong. But it's I mean, I mean he's just because somebody doesn't agree with the way in which it's happening doesn't necessarily mean writ large. He's against all working people. He's against all help for people who need help when it comes to dental care or their health care. It's just not maybe in, a, in accordance with the way you see it. Well, I don't know how else you can interpret it. If someone is we're going to make sure nine million people get health, get dental care and he's gonna vote against that. I don't know what else people will take away from that rather than he's, he's been able to enjoy free dental care paid for the public since his mid-20s, and now we're saying, well, shouldn't every Canadian get that who doesn't have coverage? And he's saying no to that, and I think that's wrong. He made a point in his leadership campaign, and I think that's what you're hitting on in this video, of very much talking to people who feel as though the government is not helping them when it comes to uh, issues around housing, the cost of living. I think that's why I'm asking whether you're worried, because generally, uh, if I think throughout the pandemic, you were the party and you were the leader bringing up those issues most consistently and certainly uh, pushing the government to move on a variety of things, like I remember during the pandemic mm -hmm. often, right, when it comes to sick days and things mm -hmm. like that. So, so, again, I guess uh, I understand why you would dismiss the idea of me asking about whether you're worried, but I think that is a very live conversation because he has made such an effort to go after the same issues, not in the same way, mm. but to really zero in on those issues. And we have seen at the provincial level, for example, Doug Ford uh, mowing some of the NDP's lawn in, in, on, in the Ontario election quite successfully, where unions, are, some unions are concerned. Uh, is this, don't, do you understand how some Canadians might perceive the release of this video as, uh, you know, an admission of vulnerability there? I think what we want to do by putting the video forward is to point out while he is certainly inflaming anger, people are frustrated and rightly so when he's flaming that anger, what is he actually proposing in terms of solutions to make it easier for people right now? And what has he done in the past? That informs what he might do in the future. And we can show really clearly Right now, one of the proposals that we've put on the table, we've forced the government to do, is to put basically a GST rebate forward, put more money back in people's pockets. He has sided with the big banks who say that's a bad idea. Uh, we think that's wrong. We think that people do need a little bit of respect so they can pay their bills. He talks about uh, you know, the anger and frustration of Canadians without any real solutions. And I think it's important to say, He's not actually providing solutions. He's actually done things in the past which are hurt, which have hurt workers and families. We are providing real solutions. 
you're also sort of positioning it as siding with corporations o over workers. Uh, are you worried at all about demonizing corporations completely, who, yes, I think Canadians do have some concerns about when it comes to huge profits, but there are a lot of corporations that, yes, make a profit, but also employ tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of Canadians right now. Are they completely the bad guy as you're painting them? We really want to focus on corporate greed because you're right, you know, companies hire workers in communities and that's important. Uh, but we want to focus on the fact that no other party, the Liberals or the Conservatives, have really pointed at the fact which other economists have noted that there is clearly corporate greed contributing to the cost of living going up. We've seen many CEOs making huge profits while their workers don't see an increase in their wages. Well, CEOs are seeing increases. We see corporate grocery stores, for example, posting some record profits and the cost of food continues to rise, but it's going beyond the increased costs, which might be attributed to increased transportation costs. But when profits are increasing that high, it's clear that in this moment, corporate greed is driving up the cost of living, and we want to call that out. But it's difficult to quantify that. There's only one economist who's even tried to do so, and there's a lot of other economists who say that that's an inaccurate way to do so. I was reading a piece, for example, from the uh, CEO of the company that oversees Sobeys, who was saying that the exact way in which you describe them isn't accurate, and, and pointed to the fact that uh, in that grocery prices went up 10.8% year over year in August, I believe. Their profit was $187.5 million, down $1 million, or point. 5% compared to last year. I'm certainly, like, I get it. I think that there are a lot of Canadians who are concerned about profit margins, but to generalize that and to say that all these grocery stores are jacking up the prices of food so that life is harder for us, again, are you inaccurately demonizing corporations that essentially employ so many Canadians? Well, we know across the boards, uh, all Canadian corporations, if you look at it in a cumulative way, are seeing some record profits, much higher profits now than in the past. And if their profits are higher, clearly they've increased prices beyond their increased costs. That's the only way they can make these high profits. There might be some exceptions here or there, but the general trend we're seeing is corporations are, and particularly their CEOs, are making huge profits while people are absolutely having a harder time buying groceries or buying, uh, filling up their cars with gas. And we know in the oil and gas sector, there's no question that they're seeing you know, record profits. Uh, they're seeing a windfall. And that's why other countries have looked at a windfall tax to say, well, they made these huge profits because of the arbitrary result of the gas prices going up. They haven't improved their production or found ways to make efficiencies. They're just making huge profits because the price of gas has just been arbitrarily increased because of speculation, because of world matters. But because of that, they're seeing these huge increases in profits and that's hurting people. So we're saying no one else is really targeting this corporate greed as a factor. There's other factors, of course, but if that's a factor, why is no one else willing to call that out? And what specifically uh, are you hoping to push the Liberals to do? Because in the last budget, they did introduce this kind of one-time extra tax on corporations with these extra big profits. Uh, and their response today was essentially, look, we, we have moved on this issue. We, we have done things when it comes to, to corporate taxes. Are you looking for a windfall tax specifically? And how far are you willing to push it? How, how big of a deal will it be? Especially since, you know, the greater context is the government is depending on your support to keep them in power. We, we certainly believe the windfall tax is a good idea. We've, we raised that a number of times uh, since early spring. We've been putting that forward. We actually put that forward before Britain even announced it. You know, we were hoping that Canada could be a leader on this. Uh, we know other countries have done it, as, as indicated, and we think it's the right thing to do. But in general, our goal is, what can we do right now to help a family uh, be able to make ends meet? We know that people are feeling the squeeze and it's not enough to just talk about it, which other leaders might do, or to ignore it and say that things are worse in another country, which the liberals did. We want to actually find a way to give people that respect and dignity that if you work hard, you should be able to put food on the table, you should be able to pay your bills. And that's what we're focused on. So, so the red line for you isn't dental care anymore because they've done it and it's not going to be this corporate windfall tax. What, what is it next for the Liberals? Well, we have a number of things that are worked into what we force the government to do that's got checkpoints in place. So for next year, we know there's a number of things that we need to see happen. The dental care program has to be a national federal program, federally administered. That's an important checkpoint. We want to make sure that the next steps around uh, pharmacare. That's going to be the next big push for legislation that has to be tabled by the end of next year. So there's a number of really key pieces that we're going to continue to push for. And we know that what we've got the government to do so far, while important, is not enough. There's things, there's still concerns around healthcare, there's still concerns around other 
perhaps measures in place for people that are feeling the squeeze of the cost of living. And we'll keep on looking to other solutions to help people. Okay, Mr. Singh, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.